again for all the youth just like sharing all this fire, all these words right now in front of just everyone. I mean, it's a very vulnerable position that you take, like standing in front of these lights, in front of this microphone, and just all these deep, intimate experiences that they're sharing. I mean, I wasn't able to do that when I was in my teens, so just give it up again for these youth one more time. I'm a space type spoken futures. Yeah, this right then, perfect. Okay, great. So I'm just gonna go ahead and jump on into this. And again, thanks for all the youth, again, putting yourselves out there with the workshop that we did earlier. It was like themed around breaking silences. And again, like this is a beautiful spot where youth are able to break those silences, reclaim their stories, their experiences, all these narratives that we have kept inside of ourselves. So again, give it up for spoken futures and we gotta keep this space alive, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to go right into this. My journey as a writer and poet. Life is a stage. One. Roots in southern Arizona. I performed my first slam poetry in front of school board and city council members, legislatures, and politicians. Usually in protest and disagreement and what they were supporting and implementing. I called out corrupt systems in my teens and young twenties, always going over the three minute time limits. I learned proficiently how to use the perfectly spaced pauses in between the short and forcibly polite, thank you, thank you, meant to say your time is up. Thank you, but we have no more time to talk about failing kids of color in the public school system due to censorship and European bias in the classroom and curriculum, and how that is directly tied to the school to prison pipeline. Thank you, but we have run out of time to note how that is all connected to the economic and politically enforced policies created by conservative legislatures that we uphold and keep in power. Great! <laughs> I always went over my time limit and I never held back. That is how I first got my start in poetry. I come back home now and I also take a little bit of Las Vegas, Sin City with me. Two, Bridgeway to Southern Nevada, this journey. I have absorbed the neon lights of sin into my body, those of which have provided the extra swagger to my words, rhythm to my flow, and attitude to my expression. The open mic scene for open ears and eyes out in that concrete and broken bottled paradise has molded my platform sturdy, to not only share my words but own those words. As if each time I speak, I fondly set the table for you all like dear long-lost friends invited over for dinner. Inviting you to engulf your palate with the fine delicacies that are my lived experiences. Painted for you in sonic waves describing colors, sounds, and places you'd have to see to believe. Throughout my journey, I have also ventured outside the city too. Becoming acquainted with the backdrop scenery of Paiute, land, and sky appreciated and humbled by these blessings, taking all that into my soul which will ultimately remain what is real, what is nurturing and life-giving, all before neon was even thought of, and all which will remain long after neon is gone. My words were formed within mountains, and they will remain for as long as they do as well. You've probably heard some snaps. Who's ever like this? If this is maybe the first slam poetry y'all coming to and things. If you hear something that really resonates, like all the youth that are coming to to share here, like before and then in the next rounds, like if you hear something, like clap it up too. You can just be like this, snap it up. You can also do those awesome like guttural grounds. Where you're just like ah, oh, like those words are so good. It's like indigestion ah, oh, kind of good. Yeah, you can do like that kind of sounds too. So yeah, feel free. I mean, we all vibe each other's off of each other's energy. So this is called. Colors of maps, music, and medicine. Our colors are not our own. They are the colors of the landscapes, regions, and territories our ancestors have walked on before us. Where they were first created, where the mountains laughed life into our bodies and where the waters breathed being into our souls. These all carry the maps of our lineage deep within our skin, dark as untouched colors of earth while reflecting off golden rays of kissed sunlight complementing our tones quite well and quite naturally. For me, my color is my shield, my defense, my sign to others. I come from a very long line of survivors. Of course I will survive absolutely anything you throw at me. 
My tint is my red and black flag. I wave up high in defiance, in pride, and challenge to others. Come at me with all you've got. Of course, I will survive your daggers. For just the feet of me living here and existing here today is tribute to which honorable breath fills these lungs and what strong blood flows through these veins. For I walk, I sing, I dance, I speak, I live with proud blood inside of me. Blood which came from the Four Corners area whose red rocks gave its colors. Blood, which came from the silent springs deep within Sycamore whose waters gave its flow. And blood, which came from Marin City in the Bay, rerouted from Texas, rerouted from Mississippi, rerouted by means of the transatlantic slave trade from Africa, from which region I cannot tell you before displacement and diaspora occurred through violent conquest and colonization. Only just that it was that same journey which gave my blood its heat, an unending resilience that refuses to give up, even when I've wanted to so badly. That blood has kept me here and continues to keep me alive today, carrying a hidden strength deep inside of myself wherein my body flows the waters of Kapoenge and the red earths of Dene territory. This blood having survived the plantation chains and whips, that ocean ride from hell where a casketless grave at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean was a better alternative for young babies. Yeah. Countless Woo! African mothers were forced to compromise while dressed in shackles and human waste down below the ships with the cargo and gunpowder. I carry within me the 1680 Pueblo rebellions in my veins, in my chest, in my cry. Haja! Santa Clara, Haja from Summer Clan and Navajo, Dene. Kabahe from Water's Edge Clan, whose tales I cannot even tell you just yet. Just that I know I am a survivor. My heart sings to me. I am a survivor. The curl to my hair and tint to my skin is proof of that, as well as the lost words I fight to bring back. Yat e shele lani clark gene she, kabahe ene shle, klejindine e e basha che, kapawenge e dasha che, klejindine e e dasha nili. Na le lani clark, na puga nene tsoe povi. Yes. Hidden words rest inside of myself as well as hidden obsidian knowledge. Lost yet found which each breath that I take pouring into my veins, curling my hair and tinting my skin. Mahogany. I am that black woman. Pleasant. Uh. Jazz singing through my body, that low edge to our voice to purge clean the body's historic memory of the cold fill of shackles upon skin and forceful touch of the white master. And yet still, Despite such a hellish environment, I also carry within me the countless legacy of many African women and African men who found each other, fell in love, and nurtured the new lives they have created, all leading to this point in time today. Where here I stand in 2017 and breathe into my hands, Waini, long life, in prayer, in medicine from where roses grow near water, and forever asked to remain walking in beauty always. Nejoniko. Yes. Santa Clara Navajo blood flowing side by side to connect Africa here, the Southwest, my color's place of creation since time memoriam, as well as also carrying that other side of my legacy who lost their ancient connection to the earth long ago, stolen from their land where only the strongest survived that ocean trip from hell. I walk with the duality like no other. One foot steps in Mother Africa and one foot steps here, the Americas. Toes dipped in sacred silent spring that heal over hard red colored earth. So I say to you, feast your eyes upon my powerful red and black body for I have got nothing to hide. Head lifted up towards the heaven, towards the gold of the sun and the silver of the moon soaking into my hair. Curls and ringlets down my shoulders lifted light from all the guilt. Does my stance offend you? The fact that my neck is stretched so far back for all the world to see when you thought I should have but remained in shadows. I am a beautiful black woman, like Nefertiti, like Nzinga, a queen. I am a beautiful red earth woman, sacred corn wherever I walk for every step I take is a ceremony. So does my body intimidate you? When any dark trace of my skin is showing, is it too sexy, too vulgar? Well, my body is my palace and every adobe brick and onyx stone was an act of love and labor like no other. All coming from those who came before me, suffering for the same tint of flesh and curve of breast and thigh. Our colors are not our own. They are the colors of the landscapes, regions, and territories our ancestors have walked on before us. 
where they were first created, where the mountains laughed life into our bodies and where the waters breathed being into our souls. We all carry this map of our lineage and legacy deep within our skin, dark as untouched colors of earth, while reflecting off golden rays of kissed sunlight complementing our tones quite well and quite naturally. For me, my color is my map, my medicine, my music, my journey, my words, my voice, my stories, my greatest gift and treasure of all. And I encourage each and every one of you to find your maps as well. Thank you. So that's like one of my, my longer poems. Do we still have time for one more? Is it? Yeah. Okay, one more, one more. So this is something that I, it's kind of like an ode to, I wish that I wrote to myself when I was younger. Um, love is a powerful force. It drives people to madness. It drives people to reunification and just so much beautiful things. And as long as we never compromise our own journeys that we're going through or love of another person outside ourselves, besides ourselves, Always just, just be sure just to ride, ride the waves, ride the waves. We don't get too caught up in the moment where we're compromising our own paths that we have in life. So this is owed to that. They're symbol in the moon. To live and to have loved is the most beautiful gift of all. Cherish it, embrace it with hands wide full and never let go the feeling of reciprocated breaths breathing each other in while cradling head to chest knowing that their heartbeat is here, right here with you in these hours, in this era, in this world of constant warfare and capitalist expansion and imposing violence all upon those who oppose. Still, despite all the chaos, you found each other. Out of the six billion inhabitants who walk among this earth, it was them who came to walk along the same route of your journey, if but only for an instant just as the star meets the earth in that one solitary moment of fate. And you can only see